In stand-up comedy, you strip out everything except what serves the joke. One of the one of the more difficult things for me to get students to do because they think they need to say everything, and you don't. You need to only say that which will pop the joke. Even in storytelling, I spend much of my time with my advanced students editing out all of this unnecessary stuff. For me, it all starts with joke structure. It's really helpful if you take every one of your jokes in what I call the crux, which is just shrink it down to what is it that the joke's about? In order to understand the setup, okay, like uh, uh, my grandfather died a peaceful death, he died in his sleep. We now start compiling a whole bunch of assumptions. Is he in the, ho in the house dying? Is he in the hospital dying? We compile what I call a first story. It's like this big movie in your head with all these details in it. And we compile those until we say, I know what the comedian means by that. Now, any extraneous information in that setup that doesn't let that happen instantaneously by putting too much information into that setup where they could expect wrong and go another place. In other words, I'm trying to get them to go well, right to right to where I want them to go. He never woke up. It was kind of peaceful. It was nice. It was, you know, I want them to go into that world, into the way I say it, everything. Oh, I'm going to lead them right to that misdirection point, that target assumption, okay? But there's a lot of processing. Now, you add too much information to that setup, you can misdirect them wrong or they get confused or there's too much information they have to process before they get to that point and you're already on to your punch. That's why you take everything out. Like Pat Oswalt says, strip out everything, everything, everything except what serves the joke. What gets them to the target assumption? Okay, let me finish this joke. My grandfather died a peaceful death. He died in his sleep. Of course, the other people on the bus were wide awake. When you put too much information in the setup and the punch, anything that's not serving just the joke itself, it slows all that processing down to a crawl or they don't process it to the point of laughter before you're moving on to your next joke. For me, I want to write a joke so lean that they get an idea, instant expectation, hit the punch, they resolve that incongruity, and it's almost an instant response from them. Ah, they just laugh. Okay, for every moment they've got to spend figuring something out, even if they eventually like the joke. So at the end, they might go, huh, but that's not what I want. You know, I want them to laugh so hard they bloody their forehead on the table. Right? You know, over and over again. That's what I want. So how do you clean out all of that debris? By the clarity of joke structure, what exactly are you communicating in that? The setup gets them to this. The punchline expresses this only. Punchlines are really, I always know when somebody doesn't know what they're doing, their, their setups are really, really long and their punches are really, really long. And the idea of the joke is lost in all that debris, all that excess information. Again, we come back to Pat Oswalt strips out everything. But first you have to know what the joke is. That's why the crux helps. What's the joke? Bring it down. Oh, it's this and this, this and this. Oh, the two things that we're really trying to get across here. Okay. Oh, grandfather died in, uh, in his bed, in a bed. Here, he's driving a bus. That's, that's what I'm trying. He died while driving a bus. That's all I'm trying to get across. Now that I know that crux, I understand it. Now I can build out from there to use the minimum possible to make that joke work.